subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to study about the different signs of death which includes immediate early and late changes so before starting this video it's a request to please like this video and subscribe to my channel for further updates also if you want this ppt then you can go check out my website i have provided the link over there and also there are many more notes so uh, the link is in the description box so let's get started signs of death are the changes which occurs after death that are helpful in estimation of approximate time of death so we look for signs of death in order to get an estimation or in order to determine when the person died or the approximate time of death and to differentiate death from suspended animation suspended animation is basically temporary death that occurs in which temporary cessation of uh, certain vital organs like heart, lungs occur, but it does not lead to death. It's just temporarily uh, your heart and your uh, vital organs they stop functioning and then they start to function again. So these signs of death, they help us determine between actual death and also suspended animation. And also it helps us determine the time of death. Now, signs of death can be of three types. We can get to we get to see immediate changes, early changes, and late changes. So all these types will be just so first let's study about immediate changes. They're also known as somatic death. These are the changes that occurs immediately the person dies. Alright, so what happens in this is there is there are three vital organs that is the brain. Uh, for respiration we have lungs and for circulation we have heart so there is cessation of all these organs so for this irreversible cessation that is this stoppage cannot be reversed all right so there is irreversible cessation or stoppage of the function of brain including the brain stem then we have irreversible cessation of respiration that is the lungs stop working and then we have irreversible cessation of circulation that is the heart stops beating okay so first let's study about this this is earliest sign of death with stoppage of functions of the nervous system because your brain has stopped working there is insensibility and loss of both sensory and motor function because our brain is responsible for all these things hence there is loss of these functions there is also loss of reflexes no response no tonicity of the muscles pupils are also dilated so these are the immediate changes that occurs due to irreversible cessation of brain then comes irreversible cessation of respiration due to which there is complete stoppage of respiration for four minutes usually causes death so if for four minutes there is no respiration occurring in the body then that leads to death tests that can be done so there are certain tests that it can be done in order to you know um, see if the person is breathing or not so first you can inspect it visually no visible respiratory movement means the respiration has stopped then you can check for palpation no respiratory movement can be felt in inspection we are seeing the uh, movement and in palpation we are seeing we are uh, feeling the movement and then we can also do auscultation that is the uh, we can uh, hear the if the breathing sounds are coming from the lungs or not all right then comes irreversible cessation of circulation so in this there is stoppage of heart for more than three to five minutes this, this is going to be irrecoverable and this is going to lead to death the test that can, that can be done is auscultation of heart again we um, try to hear the lubbed up sound of our heartbeat then uh, we can also perform ecg the ecg curve will be absent and the tracing shows a flat line without any elevation or depression now let's talk about early changes this is also known as molecular death earlier we studied about somatic death that is immediate death is also known as somatic death in which the somatic cells are dying here the death starts to occur at molecular level right 
so what happens in this is these early early changes occurs after the immediate changes that is the cessation of heart lungs and brain then starts the early changes so what we get to see here is changes in the skin and facial pallor so we get to see changes in the skin color and also in skin texture and we get to see facial pallor facial pallor pallor means paleness and facial means face so we get to see paleness of the face skin becomes pale and ash white color due to stoppage of circulation and drainage of blood from capillaries and the small vessels so your skin is going to be pale or ash white color and this happens because the circulation has stopped and there the blood is getting drained from the capillaries and the small vessels because your heart is not pumping the blood anymore so there's going to be drainage of blood which is going to lead to a pale ash white skin now the skin is also going to become loose and it is going to lose its elasticity and the face starts to look younger because there is no more crease that can be seen the lips become brown in color dry and hard hard right then comes primary relaxation or flaccidity of the muscles so the muscles lose their tonicity and they starts to become flaccid but the muscular tissues are still alive because they have a bit of atp that is the energy left inside them so they are still alive and the chemical reaction is alkaline and it responds to electrical stimuli then comes flattening then comes contact flattening and pallor now the areas which remain in contact with the ground they become flat because the gravity is pulling it down and the blood from the blood vessels of these area is spread out this continues even after the formation of post mortem staining over the surrounding areas so we'll be studying about post mortem staining in detail in the upcoming videos also then there are certain important changes that occurs in the eye of the person so first is there is loss of corneal and pupillary reflexes the pupils are dilated immediately after death because of the relaxation of the muscles of iris but later on they are constricted with the onset of rigor mortis of the constrictor muscles and evaporation of the fluid so first the pupils are dilated later on they become constricted then there is a term called tachenoia this is important it is a french word for black line now if the eye, this happens if the eyelids remain open for 3 to 4 hours after death so if the eye lids of the person are open 3 to 4 hours after that is then there is formation of two yellow triangles on the sclera of each side of the iris so you can see in this picture these triangle kind of shapes are formed on each side of the iris which becomes brown and then black with time so first they are yellow in color then they become brown and then they become black eventually opacity then comes opacity of the cornea now the cornea starts to become opaque there is opacity and haziness of the cornea due to drying and deposition of dust and debris over it then these are three most important changes early changes that occur that is the algor mortis liver mortis and rigor mortis i'll be discussing all these three in three separate videos in detail it won't be possible for me to discuss this here because then the video is going to be really long so i'll be discussing i'll be making separate videos for these three also there are late changes which includes putrefaction adipocere formation and mummification these are also big topics so i will have to make separate videos on these also so all these will also be discussed in my upcoming videos thank you for watching this video i hope you found the content to be useful subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get updated whenever i upload a new video and also share it with your friends and help them learn just like you did thank you